Yeah, this is Billiam, but I go by Billy in real life. You really only know me on the internet, so uh, you could keep calling me Billiam. Tech toys are still the coolest thing to me, especially as you look at stuff that released closer to the smartphone era. It's really interesting to see how smaller computing capabilities and internet access was being utilized for both practical and play use. <laughs> I mean, I would hardly call the video now practical, but at least you had access to videos now. In the 1990s, most tech toys were created and marketed with boys in mind, with the belief being that if girls were interested in it, they would just naturally gravitate towards it. But the alternate side of that belief was the idea that if a tech toy was created and marketed with girls in mind, that boys would generally avoid it. But f you. I wanted a password journal and I'm not afraid to admit it. You could write in it and then lock it with a voice activated password. Think of all the drawings of Sonic the Hedgehog I could have drawn secretly. The password journal was developed by Girl Tech, an innovative toy brand which aimed to change the way the toy industry thought of marketing tech toys to young girls, which essentially meant they just made really cool tech toys and said, hey, this is for young girls. From chat toys, software, you know, spy gear-esque security stuff. Stuff. So let's scratch the surface of this toy brand because you know, I think I'm finally ready to admit I kind of like toys. From Girl Tech. So cool and connected. Hey, it's me, wireless headphones. Uh, can you see what's wrong with this picture? These are lying wireless headphones. You need true wireless. And fortunately for you, today's sponsor Raycon has you covered. Raycon has been disrupting the premium true wireless earbud market for offering premium true wireless earbuds for half the price of other high quality earbuds on the market. Raycon. It's got lots of bass too. You can enjoy this extra bass while you're, you know, going on a little walk or taking a call from your sweet mother. And just so you don't have to cut that conversation short, they get six hours of playtime on a single charge, so most days it doesn't even matter that you forgot to charge them the night before. Raycon. Raycon is all about the customer experience from start to finish with a wide range of fun colors and custom fit options for a comfortable noise isolating fit. It's not hard to see why. And with a 45 day return policy, Raycon's here to fit your needs every day, baby. Every day E25s, that is. So help out the channel and go to buyraycon.com slash billiam to get 50 15% off of your first order. Thank you again to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Girl Tech as a company was founded in 1995 by software developer and toy inventor Janice Swanson. Swanson had worked as a co-developer for a few titles in the Carmen Sandiego series, including the first one. Inspired by her daughter, she began tinkering with personal recorders and other electronic parts to make toys for her daughter to play with. And eventually this concept evolved into two different popular toys from the 1990s, the Yak Back and the Talkboy FX, both of which allowed for personal recording and voice modulation. Swanson had a lot of trouble pitching tech toys that were marketed toward girls, with the belief being that they just wouldn't sell well. Just last year, Tamagotchi sold over 15 million units to young girls, so one could assume that's enough technology for them. Swanson was working in the toy and children's software industry and regularly had her ideas ignored or outright stolen by her male colleagues. And when she turned around and tried to sell these ideas to another company, she was fired and those same colleagues tried to take credit for the idea. Technology for girls, I've been saying it the whole time. While trying to raise funds for her entrepreneurial, I have so much trouble with that word, while trying to raise funds for her entrepreneurial, pursuits, Swanson became a teacher and kind of focused on holistic technology education. A lot of early girl tech products were technology education books starring, you know, Tech Girl, the, the character on the cover, before eventually a production and distribution deal was reached with Radica, an electronic toy company that I've actually covered pretty extensively on this channel. They made stuff like scanners and cube world, you be funkies. Swanson had written her doctoral dissertation on gender issues in product design and focused on play patterns with gender preferences. And with that knowledge, Dr. Swanson maintained a heavy creative hand at Radica where she used her experience to create some really fun and engaging products with the focus of encouraging young girls to be more interested in science and technology. A lot of the early girl tech products focused on security and privacy and you know, even like some early smart home stuff, like there was a plug that was voice activated. Even if you don't remember the brand, maybe you remember the tagline, so cool. Cool. So connected. Everything was cool and connected. We are styling.
This was the password phone. Yeah, look at this thing. One day, I hope to be as good looking as the anime styled characters on the back here. Four kids desperately wanted cell phones. Private landlines were trendy as heck. I mean, look at some of these home phones. I would give up convenient access to almost everything for a more aesthetic plastic. It's 3 a.m. The Bart phone rings. Do you answer? Total control. Totally cool! The password phone is powered by three AAA batteries and originally retailed for $19.99. Record your password. Hey, it's me! You know, the six-foot phone line is included. It allows you to create your own contact list and have your own private phone locked behind your voice controlled password. Unfortunately, I do not have a landline, so I am limited to how much I can test this, but I just love the way this thing looks. I mean, that is so aesthetic. I've been kind of dying to do like a 35 millimeter 1990s, early 2000s style photo shoot. And I want, I want the phone in some of these photos, you know, give them one of these, you know, one of those, maybe one of these. How about this one? And this is my password journal. It's privacy time too. It only opens to my voice. Dancer, welcome back. The most famous girl tech toy, of course, is the password journal. The password journal had a lot of varieties over the years and originally retailed for $20, but I guess this slightly later model was $29.99 at Kohl's. First thing you gotta do is enter your password. Please repeat your password. Hello. Password recorded. I gotta say, I was not expecting such presentation in the opening. You could have just done the lock, but I see where the added value came in. Inside is an included blank notebook with an invisible ink pen. You can use the light at the top as either a reading light or as a black light to show off whatever super secret invisible message you wrote. Can you imagine keeping an actual journal with invisible ink, like full entries? I mean, this is a toy, so the invisible ink gives it extra like play value. I'm not like saying it's a bad idea. It's cool times too. <gasps> Could you imagine if Leonardo da Vinci wrote down all of his notes in a password journal? Enter the password. It's da Vinci. And there was even more security stuff. There was this like, you know, door lock with an eye scanner on it. I would have loved this. Hey, you can buy your necklace. <laughs> Yo, trying to go into her room without asking, Julie? That is neither very cool nor very connected of you. I, I find it so funny that privacy and security was such a focus of both the Spy Gear and the Girl Tech line of toys. Spy Gear had the laser wire trip system, but then also, you know, just like the motion sensor alarms. Okay, okay. So if it's just, yeah, okay, it, shut up. But also Spy Gear had the spy car, the commercial of which features a younger brother using this car with a camera on it to spy on his sister. Uh, so clearly Girl Tech products were being marketed towards fixing a real concern. The invasion of the sister's privacy is just the brother's casual playtime. I can't stand it when someone goes in my room. Early last year, I did a video on a bunch of chat toys, and I got a lot of comments talking about both the friendship and the I am me. Here we have the friendships, a set of messenger toys that don't actually send messages to other devices wirelessly. Instead, you, the participant, send the message by walking over to the person with the other device. The messages are stored on cartridges, which can only be read by other friendship devices. There's no keypad, so you gotta scroll through the alphabet to select each letter. And I won't lie to you, I, I really only have the patience for one. All right, I got a, I got a few cartridges here and there's some leftover messages on them. I'm using the Kindle. Wow. John Steinbeck is on the screen of the Kindle. Oh, send the chip back. Not the thing. I hate mom so much. Oh my God. This is August 5th, two o'clock. But then we have the high-end messenger toy, the IME, released in 2007 for $64.99. The IME is a wireless instant messaging device that was similar to the uh, Motorola instant messenger free or something like that. Motorola had a dedicated instant messenger device too. Both were locked to local networks via an RF adapter that would connect to a computer to allow the device to connect to the internet wirelessly within your home. People have hacked the 
IM me to work as a garage door opener, so it's safe to say it operated on a much weaker wavelength frequency than Wi-Fi. I can't find any information about how good the RF signal worked. I don't know if you had to be within a few feet of it, or maybe you could be across the house. A lot of the criticisms at the time criticized the IME for not being able to use third-party instant messaging services. Remember, it's a closed network, so you don't need AOL, Yahoo, MSN, or any other IM provider. In fact, it doesn't even work with them. This is from the IME setup video. At first, I laughed at this like marketing bullshit. Like they're spinning this to be a positive thing, but it would be a positive thing for a kid wanting to join an instant messaging service, especially if their parents wouldn't let them. This might convince their parents. The IME could not connect to a third party instant messaging service such as AIM. It was locked into the IME messaging service, a proprietary instant messaging service where each username had to be pre-approved by a parent before a child could chat with that username. And for those who didn't have an IME, the service was available just to download Load on the computer, so if you didn't have more friends with an IME, you could still chat with them. If your friends have one, that's great, but they can talk to you from their PCs by downloading the trial software. But IME was not an existing service before this toy came out, so it needed to be built up. I can imagine a lot of people who had these toys and, you know, the friendships too, probably had trouble finding other people who had them. I mean, I can imagine, you know, some best friend situations. I'm actually really curious about this. Did you have these toys and did you have a group of people who you used them with? Like, please let me know in those comments. This is the Digi Makeover, a plug and play type game where people could take photos of themselves and give themselves a Digi Makeover. Wow. It came with this pseudo tablet Wii U gamepad type thing, but this thing came out in 2006 and it retailed for about $60 as well. I mean, I, I guess not everything Girl Tech does is a winner. $60 is a lot and pr that probably went towards the built-in webcam at the top which is like cool there's a webcam but i mean you can't really do much with it you can take photos of yourself and decorate it okay this review from 2008 says it'll disappoint your daughter to tears big old yikes Looking at Girl Tech toys, it's pretty funny how so much of the stuff is just, you know, cool stuff. I mean, of course they would complain about the IME being closed into the exclusive chat service. There wasn't really a good existing dedicated IM machine at the time. And clearly the reviewer was interested in one. The innovative thing for Girl Tech was just simply saying, hey, this can be for you too. And guess what? This stuff is fucking cool. I mean, it panned out. The brand was a big success. I can't even find a comprehensive list of products released under the brand. And even now when I'm finishing up my script, I keep coming across new things. I mean, this looks like it was an MMO. Okay. So now it's time for me to sit closely by my IME and hope that somebody eventually will log on and message me. So anyways, I'm tired. I'm stressed. I'll see you soon.